Welcome back to the Elevate Everyday Podcast, guys. This is part two of our macro series. So we talked about protein last week, and on this one, we're going to be talking about carbs, and there's a lot that goes into carbs. A lot of people hate on carbs, and me and Herb love carbs (laughs) for lots of different reasons. But first thing we're going to dive into on carbs is what they actually do. And I'll put kind of like my two cents in, and we'll have Herb put his perspective into it. But, you know, carbs are pretty much the main energy source for a lot of different things for your body. So um, carbs give you energy for resistance training workouts, which is what most of our clients do primarily, right? The most, we'll talk about this in the fats episode, but um, if you're doing really long steady state cardio, yeah, you're going to use more fats for that. But for most of the type of exercise that most people are doing, you're going to be using carbs primarily as your source of fuel. Um, Your brain uses carbs primarily for its source of fuel. So Carbs are important, guys. Like you don't want to hate on carbs, um, and we'll we'll dive deeper into that. But it is your main energy source, and your muscles store it as glycogen. That's what you're going to use when you're actually lifting and things like that. Um, so that's just a little bit about what they do on on my side of things. Herb, what do you? What's kind of your perspective on what carbs actually do for us? How we yeah, you're 100 percent right. They're our main source of energy. Um, they run our brain. They get stored in our uh, frontal lobe and in our liver. I think it's about 120 grams in our liver. We're going to pull that out and use it for energy. And when you don't have that, then your body will tap the body fat, blah, blah, blah. Um, but like you said, your body doesn't like protein. Your body doesn't use protein. It uses amino acids, break down carbohydrates to glucose and glycogen to be usable substances in the body. And again, it's it's about timing. I mean, if I'm about ready to hit the gym, you know, leg day, I'm going to carb up a little bit the night before, hit a few carbs on the way out, get into the, you know, gym, hit legs, have that energy, get some carbs to recover, you know, but six o'clock that night, I don't need carbs. I'm not going to sit down and have some pasta and bam, I'm going to load up on my glucose and glycogen, right? So it's it's a specific tool, um, whereas then you eat protein and your entire body needs it, your hair, your nails, your everything. Yep. Carbs is a little bit more, you know, uh, specific as far as based energy. But again, bodybuilding, pumping, um, that's why bodybuilders deplete their carbs before a a show, right? And then put it back in because it just blows you up. Your muscles absorb it, right? So again, it's it's very usable. And again, like anything else in life, the reason most people dog on it is because it takes a little bit of work to study. You can't just grab them and go. You got to put a little effort into it. So um, the proper carbs at the proper time is kind of like the missing link. Yeah. Yeah. And so one thing we're going to talk about is like good carbs versus ca- bad carbs. In my perspective on this, there's, there isn't really like, you can't just say like, that's a bad carb. I'm never going to eat that. Right. Like, like you said, everything has its place and it's, and it's purpose. Like what's the intention behind these carbs. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the difference between complex and simple carbs, just so the, the listeners kind of know the difference, right. Is like complex carbs are digested slower. They give you more sustained energy throughout the day, right. Simple carbs are absorbed into the bloodstream really quickly. You digest it fast. Um, so, and it's not that that's a bad thing, right? It's just like, how are we going to use these carbs? Right. So for me personally, just, you know, for my, for my own personal goals and for, for a lot of our clients, to be honest, like we, we push more complex carbs just because that's going to give you that sustained energy, that more sustained, uh, blood sugar levels, like, you know, kind of consistent glucose throughout the day. And that helps with a lot of different things. Um, but one thing me and Herb always talk about is like the one time that it is pretty beneficial to get some simple carbs, right? Like when we, after workouts and stuff like that, to, to restore that glycogen that you've been depleting throughout that workout. Um, so it does have its place, you know, even simple sugars and simple carbs, you know, they, they shouldn't be demonized, right? If you're using them correctly. So, sure. um, so it's just, like you said, like, it's about timing. It's about knowing how to use it. Like how, how are we recovering and fueling ourselves for a specific purpose? Yeah, so. exactly. I mean, after your workout, you know, you slam a protein shaker, but say, oh, I get the protein to start healing the muscle. Well, the, the good thing about complex or simple carbs is they're going to spike your insulin. They're going to send your blood sugar right through the roof, which technically is not a great thing, except for when you're done working out, it releases all this uh, insulin and anything in my system starts to get stored, i.e. if I'm eating cake and chips and stuff, yeah, I'm going to store fat, right? But if I just got done working out and slam 40 to 50 grams of protein and aminos, and my, I spike my insulin, it's going to shovel everything into what's damaged, i.e. my muscle. Yeah. So I take it around that. So there's a there's a chart outside uh, out there, the glycemic index between 1 and 100. 
Uh, good example, um, steel cut oats, very low. You're going to take those, not going to spike your insulin. You're not going to get overly woohoo-y, right? You go for a cream of wheat and you're going to be like bouncing off a wall, yeah. right? Because it's really simple. There goes the sugar, bang, right? So again, it's just knowing what to do and when to do it. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And it's like, um, I think having that specific reference, the glycemic index guys, like look that up. Like if you're trying to, you know, figure out like, okay, what's, well, what's the difference? Like just familiarize yourself with these, these things. It's, it's kind of common knowledge to me and Herb. And it's like, I, I almost forget sometimes that people don't know like what's a simple carb, what's a complex carb. Cause it's just like, I, I just know like most foods, like if it's a simple or complex, but familiarize this stuff, if you know, if you don't know, because that's going to help you choose carbs whenever you're even eating out and you're trying to still make healthy choices and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's a big part of the the conversation. Um, but kind of diving deeper into that, you know, other than the types of carbs people are having, like, how do you know how much carbs you need? Like what I'll, I'll kind of get your perspective on this first herb and then I'll, I'll, yeah, put so my I'll, in. I'll give you the bro science part. So <laughs> I get up in the morning if I look in the mirror and I can see my veins and my arms, I've got plenty of carbs. If I'm flat, i.e. my muscles feel really sluggish, I need some glucose and glycogen to get that pump go, right? So again, I kind of just tell based on my energy level in the morning where I'm at. Um, again, because a lot of those carbs are going to store and be brought out for energy, yep. right? So again, I, you know, you don't need to like, I'm going to eat three bags of potato chips because I need a shitload of energy stored. That's not exactly how it works. Um, so again, you just have to be aware of starting your day when you need it, where you don't, um, you're going to be running a marathon. You're going to be doing shoulders. I mean, you, you know what energy level you need, right? And again, everybody loves the carbs because when they hit your system, again, if they're too simple, they turn to sugar, right? So where I might grab a cream, like last night, I had cream of rice, scoop of protein and some raspberries, very low on the glycemic index. Didn't do shit for my energy levels, Right. But if I would have ran out and got, you know, cream of wheat and, you know, some potato chips or something else, well, I'd be bouncing off a wall yeah. and they would store totally different. And the results of my body are totally different. Right. But if you look at bodybuilders, pro bodybuilders, any endurance athlete, they're eating a lot of carbs. Yeah. Carbs are not your enemy. Like anything else in life, where do I need it? When do I need it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've got a similar perspective, you know, and it seems like you're very much in like the the carbs are like the fuel. I almost feel like sometimes, um, from just from having conversations with your herb, it's almost like if you're, if you're not working out, it's like you, you keep those carbs super low. Yeah. Right. So, um, and, and I agree, you know, I think you're maybe even on more on that end than me. Um, you know, I, even if I'm not working out that day, like I'll still fuel myself with carbs and everything. Um, but I, I'm just like a carb guy. It's like, <laughs> and we talked about last week, how much protein you need. So a gram to a gram and a half for, for most people is going to be, you know, sufficient. And then it's on my, on my side of things, how I kind of figure it out is like, okay, so you're getting that amount of protein. How, how much calories is that getting you? Um, we'll talk about it next week. A little teaser. It's like, how much fat do we need to just like maintain, you know, bodily function and good hormone levels. Right. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth. And then basically from there, like, I try to fill you up with carbs to fill in the rest of the amount of calories that we have to play with. Right. So like we we're figuring out how many calories is going to put you in either in a deficit or a surplus, depending on your goals. Right. And so we, the protein is pretty much like, we've got that pretty consistent. Like if we know what you're doing, we, we know what we're doing with the protein to make sure that we're covering optimally. We've got that figured out the fats. Like we're, like I said, we're giving you enough um, to, to make sure everything is okay, hormone wise and bodily function wise. Um, and then pretty much from there, like for me, I'm like, let's give you as much carbs as we can to still, um, be within that calorie goal that we're shooting for. So, um, that's kind of my perspective on things. And I hope that's makes it simple for people. Um, but yeah, the, the activity level that we're taking that into account. So if you're doing this on your own, like you have to take that into account, right? Like it, what are you using the carbs for and, and how active are you? That, that's going to help determine how much carbs you're having. Right. So. And again, guys, we're talking about real food carbs, yep. yams and sweet potatoes and, and the cream of rice. We're not talking about sugar. Yeah. <laughs> right? We're not talking about the worst carb in the fucking world, high fructose yeah. corn syrup and sugar and right. what that does to you. That's a whole nother concept. Yeah. But I think that's why carbs got such a bad rap because carbs fall under the quote unquote sugar yeah. label. 
right? Yeah, so I think, even if I eat if I eat a couple pieces of bread, it's going to spike my insulin, right? And I'm sitting on my butt. So if my body doesn't need the, the food, it's just going to store it as fat, right? Mm -hmm. Self-defense, preservation, simple as that, right? Okay. So again, your, your food should fuel you through your workout and recovery, whatever that kind of food is. And like you said, if you're not working out, you just want to sustain your life, protein is going to get you where you need to go. Carbs is going to help you. But the focus is mostly on life sustaining uh, protein. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, you know, good way, something you said about sugar, just, this just popped in my head. A good way to like make sure that you're getting good carbs. Um, and it's not surefire because, like we said, some carbs are, on, are just higher glycemic foods. Um, so it can't just be a straight across rule. But I think a pretty good rule of thumb is keeping your grams of sugar, like your daily allowance under around 50 grams um like that that's going to be a good way for you to keep that sugar low keep your blood sugar low and and then just making sure so paying attention to carbs is like also let's pay attention to the sugar right because i i do think you're right herb like most people don't even know the difference they think carbs they think sugar and they, yeah. they think the the foods like donuts and <laughs> you know all the bad carbs it's like no, let's, let's educate ourselves on what are, what are the good carbs? Let's keep the sugar low. And when you're doing that, you're just fueling yourself with really good whole foods, um, that still have good low glycemic carbs in there. Um, it's going to give you that good fuel and it's not going to, you're not going to overeat, right? Because it's also like there's fiber in those foods there. There's, there's good foods out there that are carbs that aren't the highly palatable, like, <laughs> like engineered to make you overeat type of foods, right? Th those are the types that you want to steer towards. Um, and I think most people aren't paying attention to that. So no, I mean, like anything else, it's whatever's easiest. Yeah. Right. And there's yeah. nothing easier than, you know, piece of cake. Yeah. <laughs> nothing <laughs> it, easier than, you know, a hot day like this, getting the ice cream. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I'm not saying you can't do that stuff, but earn it. Yeah. Earn it. Yeah. If you're working out and training, yes, you earned it, yeah. but you can't make excuses. Right. I mean, I would hope, again, the problem is lack of education on anything. I would hope, you know, I just bought a house and I got to do some rewiring. I'm not just going to reach into the box and start grabbing wires and zap myself. I'm going to do a little education. I've done enough so far to know I'm going to get somebody else to do it. Yeah. Right? Same reason people hire Cade and I, because it's like, yeah, this is great information, but I don't have time for it. Yeah. You know, help me out here, coach. Show me what to do. Right? Yeah. So, again, Food is tools. You use tools to build certain things. We're talking about how to build your body longer, stronger, faster. You need carbs, fats, and protein, guys. Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. And then a couple of like other little rules of thumb, because I'm just thinking of them now. And they're just popping in my head as you're saying things, Herb. It's like, you know, everyone knows stay on the the perimeter of the of the grocery store. Yeah. And that's gonna yeah. that's gonna give you the types of foods that that you want. And you want to yeah. avoid kind of the, the middle aisles. Um, another couple of things just to kind of keep in mind, I feel like this helps with carbs. Um, if it's, if it's got more than one ingredient, right. If it's not just, if it isn't the ingredient that you're, that you're eating, right. If it's not just like, that is the ingredient, that's the food. Um, then, you know, if it's got a list of ingredients, you usually want to try to limit that. Um, if it, if it's got a commercial, <laughs> yeah. you know, if, if it's on TV, if it's got ads for it, you probably want to try to limit that. Um, so yeah. those are just a couple of things to kind of keep in mind when it comes to carbs on my end. Yeah. You know, and, and, and just short of like uh, your oatmeal and your steel cuts and stuff like that, most of your carbs should be vegetables, like, yeah. you know, potatoes and yams and things that are going to go bad if you leave them on the counter. Yeah. Not bread where you leave it in the refrigerator for three years and the shit's still good. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's the immediate health benefits of protein and carbs and fats. And then there's the lasting benefits or damage from eating bad foods and processed foods and high fructose corn syrup. So that when you go to fix these problems, you've got an extended amount of problems with your organs, right? It's, it's, again, it's, guys, it's a rabbit hole and you can get down it. Just remember carbs, protein, and fats. This, they're not bad. Just what combination do I need? What's your goal? What's your intent? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it. And like, kind of like we talked about with, you know, with protein, the, it's not just, it's a carb, it's a fat. It's like, what's the quality of mm -hmm. that carb, that fat, that, that protein. 100%. So. So yeah, yeah, so I think that goes into a lot of what we we're just saying. Um, yeah. But yeah, you're completely right. If it if it goes if it goes bad, then that's actually that's the type of food you want to be having, right? If yeah. if you can leave it on the counter and it's like not even the bugs will eat it, yeah, <laughs> then yeah. you probably want to be avoiding that. Yeah. So like yeah, I've seen those videos with margin. Yeah. <laughs> bugs won't even go near that shit. 
Yeah. Yeah. There, there was a, I, my roommate in college. Now we work with, we work with his mom, um, Christy, shout out to Christy. She's killing it. Um, but yeah, my, my roommate in college left a McDonald's cheeseburger accidentally, like in between the couch cushions, <laughs> like at the beginning of the year. And we came across it at the end of the year and it looked exactly the same. Like yeah. you probably could have still ate it. Like it's, it's yeah. insane. <laughs> yeah, sure enough, see that all the time. So again, you can, it comes down to for me, it comes down to what I'm worth, and I'm worth some pretty good food. Yeah, right. I mean, there's times you're in a hurry, you get quick, but I'll tell you what: when you eat good and have a piece of crap food, you feel it. I mean, it immediately hits you. You're like, man, that's like a lead balloon in my gut. I was eating this all the time. Wow. Yeah. Right. You give up. Uh, soda pop pepsi right and then you take a drink you're like oh man this tastes like syrup right it's amazing what we can get used to i mean look at people smoke people do drugs and you crave that food stuff yeah oh, crave a, a good piece of good piece of steak with a good yam and some good you know some some good uh, asparagus or something that's that's where it's at yeah yeah i think another good little thing for people and then i'll get see if you have any other kind of little practical takeaways for the listeners but um you know, just looking for the word refined, um, you know, when it comes to bread and grains and rice and stuff like that, um, you want to avoid like super refined, enriched yeah. carbs. Um, so, so two words and find and enriched. Yeah. Don't even bother reading the rest, guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Walk away. Yeah. You walk want it away. to be as as natural, you know, as close to its original form as as you can. Um, so that, that's another good thing to look for. What, yeah. what other this kind comes of down, this comes down to make choices. Yep. And the best way to make a choice is get all the information. At least then you get an educated choice. Yeah. What other kind of practical takeaways on carbs? Do you have heard anything else? Um, you know, again, I think we covered a lot of it. Um, again, excuse me, the, a, a good meal plan should be based around protein first. Yeah. Carbs are going to get you, okay, what kind of exercise are we doing? What kind of energy does this guy have? He's only got one level and it's intense as shit. We're going to have to work with him on some carbs. Yeah. Right. How do you process the carbs? Are you gluten intolerant? I mean, there's all kinds of other things, but the best thing to remember is protein rebuilds. Carbs give you the energy and the fuel to get through the workouts. Um, again, it helps everything from your immune system to, to your muscle recovery, to your focus. I mean, I know for sure I'm, I'm reading a couple of studies right now on brain fog and it's coming from the quality of foods. Yeah. People are actually eating halfway decent. They're just not getting the quality of food. Yeah. Right. I mean, there is no quality in a McDonald's hamburger, but they'll legally be called a hamburger and fast food in a restaurant. All you got to be is 15% meat, 85% wow. filler in your meat. And I'm like, holy shit, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know? So how do I, how do I count that into my, my macros, protein, carbs, and fillers? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just, yeah. you know, stay healthy guys. Yeah. And you mentioned brain fog. That's, that's something I meant to kind of bring up is like, you know, we talked about fueling yourself correctly for, you know, the type of workouts you're doing, how, you know, how you're going to fuel and recover with carbs. But I think that's a big part of the the conversation is, you know, how, how are you mentally performing throughout the day? Yes. Um, this, and this is honestly, I think it's a little bit even more individual um, because for me, um, I'll be honest, like I, I like to keep my carbs decently low. Um, throughout my work day, because I do notice if, if, even if they are complex carbs, if I have too much, then I do kind of get that insulin spike. Right. And I, I do feel a little bit more foggy, a little bit more lethargic for a little bit of time before it kind of comes back down. Um, so I, I do like to actually save my carbs for around the workouts and then actually kind of before I go to bed, cause that, it makes me a little bit more sleepy. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's individual, it's kind of figuring out what, what helps you perform and feel good mentally and physically, um, but I think that is a part of the conversation too, that should be had. Um, oh yeah, 100%. I mean, Kate, yeah. look at your program. You got nearly a hundred clients. I do most of the nutrition and not one person has the same program the other person has. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care if you and your twin brother walk through the door, you're going to have different requirements, needs, you know, for things you're doing. So you, it takes more work. I can basically say, you know, if you're 200 pounds eating 300 grams of protein, you're going to be a monster. Now, how do we deal with the carbs? So that's the part that really needs the science. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's funny when people think, just write me a diet. It's like, I don't know who you are. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know what you need. And, and I'm thinking of carbs, yeah. right? I can, I, yeah. So, yeah, it's it, it, but when you dial that in, that's the difference. 
right? When you see bodybuilder walk on stage and he's just ripped to the bone and his veins are popping, you know, he loaded his carbs properly. Yeah. When he comes in flat, it's like he spilled his carbs. They call it spilling, right? They didn't go into the muscle. It spilled into the veins, right? Right. And flattened them out. So there is a science behind it. There is a method to the madness. And there's a reason why coaches coach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, I would say carbs is for sure the most strategic macro that we yeah that we have to pay attention to because yeah. yeah, protein, it's like, it's pretty simple, right? Like depending on your activity level, we're just making sure we have enough to recover and, and yeah. your, you know, your gender and your, your body weight. Like we're figuring that out. Um, fats, like I said, I'll reiterate it again. It's like, we just want to make sure, and we'll talk about this more in depth next week on good fats, bad fats, all that type of stuff. But we just want to make sure you're getting enough to function and have good hormone health and then carbs. Yeah. It's like, there's so many different factors coming into play. Um, what do you do for work? How active is your job? How, how many workouts are we getting per week? You know, just how do we want to time this? All that type of stuff. But so, yeah, I would say like people make it too, too simple. Like they think it's just going to be like, okay, carbs are bad. Let's cut it out. Or yeah. carbs are really good. Let's, you know, get as much as we want. It's like, no, it's a little bit more nuanced. This is probably the most strategic macro. Um, and we want to ask all those good questions so that we can figure out what does this person need? How, how can we give them enough to feel good? function optimally but still get to the goals that we're shooting for yeah. so yeah you know. cool well, i think we'll wrap it up there i think that was that was pretty good um guys yeah. let us know if you got any questions on this specifically on carbs i feel like this this could be a really nuanced conversation depending on the person um so let us know if you got questions on this next week we're gonna be talking about fats and fiber we're gonna lump fiber into the conversation next week um so stay tuned for that other than that guys subscribe, hit the like button, make sure to subscribe. Um, we got part three of this part three series coming next week. Appreciate you, Herb. Um, we'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, elevate every damn day. Yep. Yep. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.